down in the valley, valley so lonely. Uh, late in the evening, hear that. Can't I don't really remember most of the time when we lived bum. together. No. Bum, 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 my mum used to drop me on, drop me at the platform in Hinkley and then my dad would collect me from the platform mm. in Eton. I tended to play a lot on my own. I got the doll just there. Bum, 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 bum. Made me not play. That's okay. I probably forgot it. I used to hear this every weekend. Yeah, I remember watching the movie. I used to have cereals for breakfast. Bum, bum, sure bum, bum. They. Yeah, um, I was there or not. No. Um, and you'd be going down to the end of the bowl with your cereals, having really enjoyed your breakfast. And then all of a sudden, at the bottom of the bowl, you'd sort of scrape through the milk, and you'd see these black hairs, which you know had been covered bum, in brill cream. It's a guy, something like that. My mother always said that the non-eaten blokes married Hinkley girls to keep them in the style that they were accustomed because the Hinkley women <laughs> always worked like that. Uh, but anyway... Certainly if something had gone down, you know, not either the non-eaten lads would be over or the Hinkley boys would go over to non-eaten to, to have a, a rumble. But, a bit cheeky but all, you know, just talking. She wants to smack them. around the So, I mean, getting accepted by the Nuneaton crowd was quite difficult. It took time. But, you know, they would call hinky boys wankers and vice versa. And, uh, you know, there was a, quite a strong dislike between the two communities. They're just two small Midland towns, literally down the road from each other, um, totally surrounded by countryside, which is very beautiful. But when you were growing up, it, it did feel like you were trapped. Um, yeah, you didn't always pal up with everybody because it depended where the church was. Church chapel, and if you were we were ah. church, so of course chapel people, you acknowledged them, but you know, they were... Mm. That's uh, what, that's what they talked about you. them behind the back. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they talked you. about us behind the back. But the point was, you knew everybody in the village, absolutely literally everybody. Well, we and a lot of their business as well. So there was no keeping up with the Joneses, because we all were we the Joneses. We all were the Joneses, yeah. Yeah. so we couldn't keep up with them. Yeah. Robinson's. Millenesses, Jacksons, Wokham, Thomases, the Flatlands across the road, Reeds. Chip Shop. Yeah. Yeah. Chapel, yeah. There was our family. Baker. And we got a district nurse who lived in the village. Weren't she hateful? The parson, of course. Who are you looking for? Yeah. Yeah. The schoolmaster. Uh, of some sort, uh, every few yards in, in every street. Much paddling and much fishing we met. Bun bank ferry on mounds and God knows what and buns. I think really we sort of got through it just by getting pissed a lot. It was pulled all the way up the street. What oh, art stood there, you know. It's... Oh, we just used to come into Inkley on the train went out and have a couple of pints and stagger back down the station. There was the boot in the Litchfield Tavern. The cabin had run in and the sports turned into more than a couple of pints. One particular night, it got absolutely horrendous. But, I mean, there was nothing to do. We did some, we did some awful things. Test them apart with a bottle. <laughs> so, we'd had a few. Small town. There's a lot of holes uh, and turkey and Indian. There's nothing there. Absolutely nothing. Oh, the you know, we got absolutely smashed. Sky, 
Have you anything to say to me? Very well, very good. Can you tell me when um, my love can't be one of them is in a wet meadow or a mist where someone's waiting to Or the number of the floor of the carriage coming up to meet me last night. Just go I then got to the point I couldn't I couldn't have cereals anymore at my dad's because I think I couldn't handle their hairs. <laughs> so I just I used to just sleep in my dad's room on a little a uh, little fold out. Camp I always used to feel really bad leaving my dad at the end of the weekend because it felt like we were leaving him on his own. You know, I felt sometimes I'd, it would be nice to go home and and then I, and I would then feel bad about that. during the week I'd spend my time surrounded by these women that used to make knickers and socks and ties. The fashion scene, flat scene, blinking. The very first time I went into a factory there was an old woman there and in those days in the Hosier the women worked till they either died at the machines or they shot them or something because they, were, they never gave up, just, and she was telling dirty jokes. Oh, I was so embarrassed, I thought, she's an old woman. Well, we often referred to it as a prison camp. When you got in, it was head down, toe down. You weren't allowed, you weren't allowed to leave. Or well, you didn't earn any money. It was so boring that you had to let your mind wander. Our Joan would say, don't talk to me this afternoon, I'm going to America. That machine, it just never stopped. You had to get permission to go outside. So that was it, she'd be off to America. It had always been a family firm, and it had always been families who worked there. And as they grew up, yes, they still worked there, and their children worked there. It was a firm you would have said would go on forever. Um, but it didn't. I'm no cow hand. From Rio Grande, and my knees ain't bone, and my cheeks ain't tan. My dad a minor. My granddad has a minor. My granddad has a minor. My granddad has a minor. Before him, all three of them had exactly the same name, first name, middle name, surname. I remember one time his mum sort of saying that, you know, he shouldn't be going out with me because I was um, far better, you know, I can't, it was far, far, far better than him. And they, they, they were very much, this is your role, this is your place in life, you shouldn't aspire to be anything different. Yeah, I mean, the way it was stated, it was adamant, you know, this is what you are and you'll never be any better. And... Uh you're beginning to notice the lads then, and the lads are beginning to notice the girls. So, of course, they tend to pinch your gloves. And you know, if you played cowboys and Indians, the girls had to play as well. But uh, I knew I should get into a row if I'd lost my gloves. We had a fight with these lads, and uh, we got the best of it, and their mum went to the headmaster and complain and he said there's only one thing I can say to you boys these girls are champion fighters <laughs> you better to leave them alone so we shot them he called me over he, he knew I got a good mark he says you've got a good haven't you so I said well yeah thank you uh, what have I done now Japanese were at it as well but we could take it I mean we were we got a very good skill base at our place and we took the jobs on. And in Korea, of all places. You never seen the bad times really come. It's actually a big one.
I do remember one time resting my head against the door frame. Yeah, I remember watching them argue. The paintwork on the frame was all chipped and you could see the green underneath. So I always felt a bit torn between these two places, a little bit caught in the middle. Your grandma's garden was a sort of neutral ground. I couldn't really take any sides because I was a bit of, bit of both sides. We never killed anything on it if possible, not actually on the garden. It used to be hard because when you're in one place you would miss the other place. Well, I did kill a, a finch once. And when you were with an, with one person you'd, you'd miss the other person. I was mortified, sort of randomly blasting off with the air going into a tree. And this bird fell out and I was, I was mortified. I buried it, you know, with full military honours, you know, in a tin. It's like you're constantly going backwards and forwards between these two places. I don't know, it's not like I wanted my parents to be together. We were terrible together. Um, but it was just quite hard having these kind of almost two separate lives. I still go down now because where I fish now is actually dug out of a hole that had got bun banks round it and we had all sorts of rumours about what these banks were like burial mounds and god knows what and actually all they were were buns to hold the water in and uh, the, these carp lakes were there and now the ironic thing is that somebody's now dug a hole in the middle of the Bed of the carp lake and put fish in it, and there's carp in it again now. Like, you know, so I'll go down there and fish it. But I still sit there and think in that field what it was like when there wasn't any water in it. Down in the valley. You're not singing, Joe. No, no, I'm not. I don't drink. She's enjoying a cup of tea. She's not. <laughs> yes.